Okay, in the previous video, we saw how confusing the nested scope hierarchy was. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the controller as syntax, which is basically a syntactical solution to this problem. Angular introduced this as a new feature. It's basically syntactical sugar. It's basically a different syntax to do the exact same thing. But the syntax actually makes things very clear, and you know which scope you are referring to whenever you have an Angular expression in your code. So here's the syntax, right? So this is how you write controllers using controller as. First of all, when you have an ng controller, remember this is the syntax we are used to, right? We say ng controller equals the controller name, and the controller name is what you've defined your controller as, right? This part is going to be the same. However, when you're using ng controller equals controller name, you not just specify the controller name, you also give it an alias. Every controller that you write in ng controller can be given an alias. So the alias is provided by using the syntax. It says the controller name as an alias name, which is C1 over here, right? Here I have controller2. I'm going to say controller2 as C2. So the name is because of this as keyword in that syntax, right? If you do this, you're basically doing the controller as syntax. Now, by doing something like this, you say, hey, Angular, I want to use this new syntax. And Angular is going to expect you to use the alias whenever you're referring to the controller's scope, all right? So here I'm using test prop. I can't just say test prop and have Angular figure out where in the hierarchy it needs to look up. I need to be very explicit about which controller's scope I'm referring to. Here, I want to look up the controller one scope. So I'm going to say c1.testprop. So this way, it's very clear that I'm referring to this controller's scope. Similarly, here I'm referring to C2, so I'm going to say C2.testprop, all right? For this, I have converted this HTML to controller as syntax, right? Now I'm in the controller as mode. Now, this is the HTML part of it. There is some change that you need to do to the controller as well. When you've decided to use the controller as syntax, you need to write your controllers in a slightly different way, all right? So how do you write your controllers? First of all, when you're using controller as syntax, you don't have to inject the scope. You should not inject the scope. Well, then how do you get hold of the scope? Well, here's the thing. When Angular sees a controller as syntax, you can assume that it adds this virtual line in the f as the first line of every controller. Assume that it adds a var this equals dollar scope. Right? Just assume that it adds something like this. It doesn't literally add it, but it does some stuff which is pretty much, sim it simulates this kind of a logic, right? So rather than have dollar scope as an argument to your controller, when you're using controller as syntax, Angular does this so that you don't actually have to pass this as an argument, right? When you can just use this because Angular automatically takes that dollar scope and it sets it to the this keyword. You must be familiar with the this keyword in JavaScript. It's an implicit argument to any function. And what that value contains could be different depending on how that function is called. Angular makes sure that when the controllers are called, the this keyword always points to the scope. So since you already have this in the function, you don't have to inject dollar scope anymore. Instead, you just use this dot test prop. Similarly, here you say this dot test prop, all right? This is the controller as way of writing code, right? So I'm gonna remove this because it's not really there. You just have to assume that there is that syntax that executes. But with this, we have con converted our previous code to the controller as way of doing things. So what are the changes we did? First, we went to the ng controller and changed the value to the controller as syntax. It's not just the controller name anymore, it's controller name as alias, right? We do that for every place where we have ng controller. Secondly, wherever there's an ng bind or an angular expression, you just don't say the property anymore. You say the alias dot property to tell Angular which specific controller's scope you're referring to. So here it's c1.testprop, here it's c2.testprop, where c1 and c2 are the new aliases that you created for the two controllers. This is the HTML part. The next change you need to do is go to the controllers itself, and rather than injecting the scope and then saying $scope dot 
property, you remove the scope injection, right? Every controller gets the scope for free using the this keyword. So you just say this dot and then set whatever property you want. Instead of dollar scope, you're just gonna do this dot. All right, so with these changes, let's refresh the page one more time and nothing should have changed. It still says controller one and controller two. And the advantage of this approach is, now I can say c1.desprop inside the inner controller, and guess what happens? It pulls up from that outer controller. So I can access controllers scopes. So A, it's more flexible, and B, it makes it really, really clear so you know exactly which controller's scope you're referring to. So this is the controller as syntax. This is highly recommended. Whenever you're using controllers in Angular 1.x, please make sure you do use the controller as syntax. It's way better and way easier to read.